Hi, I'm Dan with Family White TV, and the TLDW of this video is that you should acoustically treat your room before you buy better speakers or amplifiers. In fact, acoustically treating your room will give you a better dollar for dollar improvement in audio quality than buying better speakers or amplifiers. Okay, if your primary speakers are really chintzy, better speakers will help, but you'll still want to eventually treat your room. So what does it mean to acoustically treat your room? Well, let me give you an example. Right now I'm standing in my acoustically treated home theater. Now I'm going to walk out into my dining room, which is not acoustically treated. Now you can immediately tell the difference in how the room sounds. My dining room has a lot more echo in it compared to my theater. This is because it's not acoustically treated. There's hard walls, there's hard floor, ceiling, and there's just not much in here to treat acoustics. Now, if I walk back into my home theater room, which is acoustically treated, you're immediately going to notice that there is a definite difference in the audio quality. So why is the echo of an untreated room a bad thing? Quite simply because the echo is noise, and noise is annoying. When you reduce the echo of a room, you gain the ability to play your movies louder without them sounding loud. What the heck does that mean? Well, there is loud and there is annoying loud, and they can be at the same relative decibel level. You see, sound leaves your speaker in all directions. What happens is your ears first hear the sound that is directly radiated from your speaker. Your ears then hear an echo of that sound you just heard. Then you hear an echo off the other wall, and you hear a third. You hear a third echo off the ceiling and then possibly an echo off the uh, coffee table or the floor. These echoes constitute unwanted noise and it is these echoes that make a loud sound annoying loud. If you can reduce these echoes you can turn the volume higher before the sound becomes too loud. Another reason to treat your room is to achieve better imaging. Imaging is an acoustic effect of multi-channel audio. For example, let's say you're listening to music. With good stereo imaging, you'll be able to identify where each instrument is physically located in the band. With bad stereo imaging, the entire sound stage is muddled and it's hard to tell where the sound is supposed to be coming from. There are two main types of acoustic treatments, absorbers and diffusers. Absorbers are basically panels like this one. This has a two inch thick panel of mineral wool inside. Rigid fiberglass panels also work just as well. What this does is it absorbs the sound so that the sound that does get through is attenuated so it's not as loud. For example, I can talk into the wall and you're going to still hear my voice fairly clearly. But if I move over to the panel and talk into the panel, you're not going to hear me as much. Now the other type of treatment is diffusers. I don't have any of these personally because they're a little harder to make and they look pretty funky, which means they have a much lower spouse acceptance factor. What diffusers do is they attenuate sound by reflecting it in multiple directions. They can also be tuned to certain problematic frequencies. Now these take a bit more skill and analysis to use properly, so I consider them an advanced form of treatment. As such, this video is going to focus on absorbers. So how do you make an absorber? It's really simple. You build a box, secure a panel of rigid fiberglass inside, and cover it with some sort of fabric. Now I use bed sheets on this one because they're cheap and readily available. As a tip, buy king size sheets. You get more material for the money than if you buy twin size sheets. Another material that would work well is matte milliskin spandex. This is the same material I use for my screen and it has excellent acoustic transparency. Ideally your covering will be acoustically transparent because it would defeat the purpose of a sound absorber if the material you cover it with reflects the sound before it can be attenuated. For the actual absorbing material, you can use rigid fiberglass or mineral wool. In the States, rigid fiberglass is probably your best bet. I haven't been able to find it at Home Depot or Lowe's, so you'll have to order it from somewhere. The product I've seen recommended most is Owens Corning 703 and Owens Corning 705. 703 is a lighter product and is ideal for general absorption. 705 is better used as base traps. Now, When you look at these products, you'll see that they come in thicknesses of 1, 2, and 4 inches. Ideally, you'll want all three. So where do you place them? At this point, I need to say that there are two schools of thought about room treatments. One is to have one seat of excellence and you don't really care about all the other seats. 
If you're treating your room just for yourself and you're only concerned about one spot, then you need to start reading about how to do envelope time curve analysis to surgically treat specific locations in your room. Envelope time curve, sometimes called energy time curve analysis, or ETC for short, is beyond the scope of this video, but you can search for instructions on how to do this by searching for envelope time curve analysis. I'll also provide some links below down there somewhere. The other school of thought is no great seat, but no bad seats either. This is more suited for a home theater where you want everybody to experience good sound. For this, you just have to follow some general guidelines on room treatment that result in no seats being bad seats. To be clear, however, you can still surgically treat your room, especially if your theater seating is recliners that will keep your listeners in controlled positions. But if your seating is sofas, then there's too many seating possibilities, and so general treatment is good enough. Now, my recommendation is to treat the entire front wall with one inch fiberglass panels, wall to wall, floor to ceiling. In general, you want the front wall to be dead. This dead wall helps to reduce the room's overall echo and also helps reduce reflections from rear and side surround speakers. If two-channel audio is your thing, then you probably don't have to worry as much about treating the front wall. Next, apply two-inch panels along the side walls. These need not be wall-to-wall. -wall. Just space them evenly apart. Now, ideally, they'll be at the first reflection points of your speakers, but things like doors, windows, and aesthetics may limit your options. And do the same thing to your back wall with panels treated, or with panels spaced evenly apart. This is especially important if you have horn-loaded speakers like I do. The most notable horn-loaded speaker brand is Klipsch, but there are some others. Horn-loaded speakers can sound overly bright in the highs, and acoustically treating your back wall will help to tame this brightness. If you can, also affix panels to your ceiling, again at the first reflection points. Now speaking of first reflection points, I should probably define the term. First reflection points are a point along the wall or ceiling where sound makes its first reflection. This point is easy to find with an assistant and a hand mirror. Basically, sit in your primary listening position, and yeah, this isn't a mirror, but uh, you kind of get the idea. And have your assistant move the mirror along the wall. When you see a speaker in the mirror, you found the first reflection point, and that's ideally where you should put treatment. At this point, I should tell you not to go overboard with the panels. If you put up too much absorption, the room will start to sound dead. A room with a lot of echoes is a live room. A room with no echoes is a dead room. You want your room to be somewhere in between. Now for the floor, you can't really put panels there, and so if you can help it, I'd recommend that your theater be carpeted with plush carpet. If it isn't carpeted, buy a big area rug. Hard surfaces are not your friend when it comes to acoustics. Finally, you'll want to do bass traps. If you can't afford to do it all at once, you can save these for later. Bass traps should be made of 4-inch panels or two 2-inch panels sandwiched together. These should be placed in the corners of the room because that's where bass likes to collect. The reason for bass traps is rooms can behave badly at low frequencies. You can have some areas where bass is really loud and some areas where bass is barely audible. This is due to room modes that create standing waves. Bass traps help lessen the severity of these so that you have a more even frequency response. The thing is, bass is really hard to control, so if you do bass traps, you need to go all out and do as many corners as you can. And if your budget will allow it, even do the corners where the ceiling meets the wall, the floor meets the wall, all the corners. But, you know, that's a little bit crazy, so if you can do at least the four corners, that will help you somewhat. Now I will say that ideally a room will have a combination of absorbers and diffusers. If absorbers are making the room sound too dead, you can replace them with some diffusers. However, to really do it right, you need to do advanced room analysis, which is beyond the scope of a short YouTube video. But if you really do want the best sound possible, you'll want to read up on doing room analysis. But for most of us, what I've talked about in this video will get us most of the way there. Once you have treatments up in your room, you should notice an immediate benefit. The sound will be tighter, the echo noise will be reduced, and the stereo imaging will be more precise. Now you can go ahead and start saving up to buy better speakers and better amplifiers. 
So here's some other videos on speakers that you may want to check out, along with some other videos about home theater. And at this point, I'm supposed to tell you to please like, subscribe, find a bell icon somewhere, etc., etc., and thanks for watching.